What's up guys, so El Chico Eevee. The Lika, the legend, posted a video about every single Pokemon that's coming out, Mew, Dodrio, and Scyther, and put down all the move description. For this video, will be a lot of reading. Um, I put chapters down so you can skip to the Pokemon you want to really know. Otherwise, of course, we can, uh, you know, go through this entire video together and read every move. And as you can see, I'm very hyped for Mew. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. Not my favorite, but one of my favorite Pokemon. So I'm very excited to see what this Pokemon will actually be able to do. So first one, we have Synchronize. Each time the Pokemon uses a move, it and nearby allies have their movement speed increased for a short time. When the Pokemon reaches level 5, the move reset icon can be used to reset the Pokemon moves and learn new ones. This icon goes on a cooldown after it's used. Each time the Pokemon knocks out or makes an assist on a Pokemon on the opposing team or scores a goal, the cooldown of move reset is reduced. Using move reset, we use the cooldown of the Pokemon's Unite move. That already sounds quite crazy, so we can reset our moves. Not sure exactly which moves you'll be able to reset um, or what we'll be able to get, but yeah, let's keep going through the video. So it's the first synchronize, the passive, I guess. And then we have basic attacks. Each time the Pokemon uses a move, it gains a boost counter. A maximum of three counters can be stored. A counter? After three boost counters are stored, the Pokemon's next basic deck becomes a boosted auto attack that consumes all boost counters and launches a ball of psychic energy at an opposing Pokemon. The further the ball of psychic energy travels, the more damage it deals. All right? Sounds uh, pretty standard, pretty normal. Just some um, boosted auto take damage. Then we have Electro Ball. Has the user hurt an electric orb dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect and leaving them paralyzed for a short time? This move deals more damage the lower the opposing Pokemon is. It's literally Pikachu's, right? And upgrade strengthens the effect of the paralysis inflicted by this move. So, I mean, it pretty much sounds like Pikachu's Electro Ball. Uh, okay, next up we have. You can also see it, of course, here at the bottom. That's why my cam is up here, because he put the moves at the bottom left. Then we have Solar Beam, has to use a Blast, a bundled beam of light dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. If this move hits any opposing Pokemon, the user gains an additional boost counter. Alright. Upgrade reduces this move's cooldown by one second for each opposing Pokemon hit. Yeah, those are the ones I like. I, I really wish they would make more moves that are like the more you hit, the lower the cooldown will be. So this is very cool. I like these kind of upgrades or these kind of things and moves. Next up we have Surf, I think. Yeah, we have Surf. Has the user charge forward on a wave, shoving opposing Pokemon and leaving that up unable to act. The user gains a shield and becomes immune to hindrances while using this move. At the end of this move, the user can jump in a designated direction and becomes immune to hindrances for a short time. Alright. Sounds pretty good. So pretty much like Blastoise kinda, but even better. Strengthens the effect of the shield granted while using this move. So we also gain even a bigger shield. So far, very, very a lot of different things, which I really like. And then we have coaching. Has the users has the user moved towards an ally Pokemon? Grant that Pokemon a shield and increase that Pokemon's basic attack speed. Oh. If this move is used on an ally Pokemon that has not been coached, its cooldown immediately resets. If this move is used on a recently coached ally Pokemon, again with the set amount of time, it goes on a cooldown. The cooldown of Electro Ball Soul Beam or Surf is reduced each time this move is used. Upgrade uses this move's cooldown, also reduces the waiting time before this move can be used on a Recently, I don't know what, if there's more text towards it. Yeah. I mean, on a recently coached Pokemon, I would assume it's the text. Okay, that sounds pretty crazy. Sounds like, I don't know, something like Yumi from, <laughs> from League of Bits. Um, yeah. So I guess they have like, some support moves as well. And it sounds like, you know, with the Synchronize, you can choose between Surf, Solar Beam and Electro Ball, and you can keep changing it throughout the game, I assume, right? Those are the moves you can probably keep changing, but obviously you have to see it in action before actually understanding how that fully works. Um, now we had a similar Pokemon, a uh, similar character in Heroes of the Storm, Lucio. He was also a Pokemon that could go from jump, jump, jump from to ally to ally and give them some healing. So that's kind of cool. All right, sounds good. Then next up we have Light Screen. This one we saw in the trailer as well. Has the user create a translucent wall. At the designated location, opposing Pokemon cannot pass through the wall and will be shoved if they make contact. Oh, so if they, okay, if they touch it, they will get shoved. Interesting. If the user's Electro Ball, Solar Beam, or Surf move passes through the wall, the effect of the move will be boosted. That sounds very cool. It's like Jace from League of Legends, where you also have like a gate and you shoot through it, becomes better. Maybe boost if this move is used again, it pulls the wall closer and has its move with the user. It has it move with the user. While the wall moves with the user, attacks from opposing Pokemon that pass through it will deal reduced damage. Increases the size of the wall. Upgrade. Okay, that sounds pretty insane. That sounds very fun. 
I'm already a big fan of this kit. Agility has the user move quickly in the designated direction, increasing its move speed for a short time. A maximum of two users can be kept in reserve for this move. Upgrade increase the distance the user moves in this designated direction. So I think Mew doesn't have any basic moves. I'm pretty sure this is just the next one is the yeah. So I think we can just we have three moves on the first one, three moves on the on the second slot, and we can keep changing them to synchronize. That sounds kind of insane, I'm pretty sure. So we can keep changing between Electro Boy, Surf, and Solar Beam. And we can keep changing between Light Screen, Coaching, and also Agility. So this Pokemon sounds absolutely crazy fun. I Oh my, oh my god. There's so many possibilities already. I cannot wait to play Mew. Oh my, I'm going to play Mew so much. I'm so excited. Actually, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so happy. This sounds super fun. And then Unite Move has the user float higher, create a feed at this current location, and become invincible. The move, the user and ally and, and all ally Pokemon in the area of effect enter stealth. Oh my god. After some amount of time passes, this Unite Move deals damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. Okay. Becomes invincible. And everyone allies become stealth. Wow, that sounds pretty insane too. Yeah, I'm very excited from you. Very excited. Next up, we have Dodrio. This is the new speedster coming to Unite. Passive, the Pokemon's move speed increases when opposing Pokemon are nearby. While the Pokemon is moving, its Sprint Gosh charges. When its Sprint Gosh is full, or Gage, it's called Gage, sorry. The Pokemon starts running. English is not my first language. I think some of you might have noticed. The Pokemon starts running with the increased move speed. If the Pokemon's move speed decreases below a set speed, the Sprint Gage will rapidly deplete. When Dudo scores a goal, it eventually divides its collected Eos energy into two portions and it deposits them into the goal, one at a time. After Dudo evolved, wait, what? When Dudo scores a goal, it eventually divides the collected Eos energy into two portions. Interesting. So I guess you have shorter time at scoring. After Dudo evolves into Dudrio, when it scores a goal, it evenly divides its collected energies into three portions and deposits them into the goal one at a time. That sounds very unique and interesting. Okay. I guess it makes sense with the three heads. Okay, that sounds very, very, very interesting. Basic attacks becomes a boosted attack with every third attack, dealing consecutive blows with the user's head. If the user dashes, gauge is full and it hits an opposing Pokemon with the basic attack, the user's move cooldowns are reduced. Also, when the user dashes, dash gauge is full, its basic attack will have its charge in the direction it's moving and consume all of the dash gauge. All right. Sounds pretty good as well. Yep, sounds good. Next up, we have Peck of Dudo. Has the user move forward, forward by jabbing with its beaks. When the sprint gauge is full, the user instead charges forward by jabbing when it's break when it beaks. Using this move fully consumes the sprint gauge. Okay, so it's also something you know that has more things going on for it. You have to be very clever with your passive. Try attack. Is this on Dudo? No, this is on uh, Dodrio, on Evolution. Okay. Has the user attack with its beaks in a cone in front of itself, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon and applying one of the following random effects. It decreased to attack and damage over time for a set amount of time. It decreased to basic attack speed or decreased to move speed. When the user's sprint gauge is full, the user instead shoots out three projectiles, one red, one yellow, one blue. In the designate direction, if a project hits an opposing Pokemon, the projectile deals damage and applies one of the aforementioned effects based on its color. After this move is used, the user's next basic attack deals additional damage and restores some of the user's HP. A maximum of two users can be kept in reserve for this move. Okay, sounds pretty insane as well. The user's next basic attack after using this move restores more HP. When the user's sprint gauge is full, this move's cooldown is reduced. Alright. And this has so many things going on. And the other choice is Drill Pack. Has the user move forward by striking with its sharp beaks multiple times, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it hits. When the user's sprint gauge is full, the user dashes forward while striking with its sharp beaks multiple times, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it hits and shoving them. Using this move fully consumes the sprint gauge. Okay, it reduces this move's cooldown and upgrade. Also, when this move hits opposing Pokemon, it restores a portion of the user's HP based on the amount of damage dealt. Honestly, it kind of sounds like our rounder and not really much of a speed star, I have to admit. Quick attack has the user dash forward. Increasing its move speed for a short time and dealing damage to opposing Pokemon, this move's cooldown is reduced if it hits opposing Pokemon. So pretty straightforward. Quick attack. Agility removes all status conditions from the user and charges its sprint gauge. After, afterwards, the user's move speed is increased for a short time 
And its sprint gauge charges faster. That sounds pretty good. Agility, I like it. After this move is used, the user's sprint gauge becomes fully charged. Very cool. Sounds good. And jump kick. Has the user leap forward by kicking? If this move makes contact with an opposing Pokemon or obstacle, the user leaps over it and stomps the ground when it lands, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the air of effect and decreases their move speed for a short time. If this move makes contact with an opposing Pokemon or obstacle, the user's spin gauge charges. If this move makes contact with an opposing Pokemon, its cooldown is reduced. So pretty similar to other Pokemon like um, Bushole, where one move right charges up the thing you need, and then the other move uses that thing you know to do extra damage or do extra things with. So again, these you know, jump kick and agility help you help your other move you know to do more damage or whatever their bonus is. Upgrade when the user storms the ground after leaping. Opposing Pokemon in the air effect are also left unable to act. Sounds also pretty decent. And then we have the unite move. Has the user run to a designated location while running, the user is immune to hindrances. If the user makes contact with opposing Pokemon while running, it deals damage to them and throws them into the air. When the user arrives at the designated location, its attack is increased for a short time and is granted a shield. Also, its sprint gauge charges faster for a short time. I know it's a fast Pokemon, but as if he's more like an all-rounder. We have some shields, we have more healing, right? Normally, speeds us down really have you know sorts of sustain and stuff but yeah this pokemon sounds very fun as well i mean i like playing speedsters and i like playing melee pokemon so you know i'm a huge fan of lucario and uh serena machamp so seems pretty similar i have to say and yeah i think that's it and now we go into scissor which i'm also very excited for it's a very cool pokemon and uh, yeah, let's read it. Technician. After the spoken uses a move, its next basic attack will change and deal two consecutive basic attacks instead. The second of these deals increased damage. Technician effect. The Pokemon's next basic attack will deal two consecutive basic attacks. All right. <laughs> okay, sure. Basic attack Scyther becomes a boost attack with every third attack, the additional damage and increasing the user's move speed for a short time. Basic attack Scizor becomes a boosted attack with every third attack, decreasing the move speed of opposing Pokemon when it hits and increases the user's defense for a short time. This defense increase can stack. Only defense though, okay. So very good Pokemon against physical attackers. Which I think something like this would be good if there was like a draft so you can actually, you know, pick it against Pokemon that actually are good against us. Then we have Fairy Cutter for Scyther. Has the user slashed twice with its scythe in a cone in front of itself, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it hits. The second slash deals more damage than the first. So pretty basic. Fairy Cutter. And then we have the upgrade. Oh no, this is also another basic move. Quick attack. Has the user dash forward, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. It makes contact with along the way. So another dash. Dual Wing Beat. Has the user slashed in front of itself with both of its scythe dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in an X-shaped area of effect. Looks pretty cool. If this move deals damage to an opposing Pokemon in the center of the X-shaped area of effect, it restores the user's HP. If this move hits an opposing Pokemon, it can be used again within a set amount of time. If this move is used again, the user dashes in the designated direction, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it makes contact with. The dash deals more damage the lower the opposing Pokemon's HP is. So we have an Execute as well. We have a Reset. Sounds a very good ability already. Increases the damage dealt by this move on the upgrade. Already sounds very, very powerful. Next up we have... Double hit. Has the user jump in the designated direction, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. It hits during the jump and applying a mark to them. After the user hits opposing Pokemon with this move, it jumps again in the designated direction. When the user lands, its next basic attack becomes a boosted attack and it charges at a nearby opposing Pokemon. If a marked opposing Pokemon is knocked out, all of the user's moves cooldowns are reduced. This sounds more like a speedster already. This sounds more like a speedster than Dodrio, I have to say. All right. So we have a complete cooldown reset as well. On every single move for double hit. I, all I'm going to say is like reset Pokemon always have a lot of potential and always scary. Like in any MOBA, if you have a character that has reset mechanics, it can be very, very scary. Very, very scary. Has the user dash a short distance, increasing its attack power for a short time. While the user's attack power is increased, the user's 8 basic attacks become an area of effect. Wait, has the user dash a short distance, increasing its attack power? Yeah, for a short time. While the user's basic attack power is increased, the user's 8 basic attacks become an area of effect. 8? The tip pierces through opposing Pokemon in the line. Okay. Upgrade also reduces the damage the user receives from opposing Pokemon by dashing. Okay, that's pretty good. Good upgrade as well. 
Bullet Punch has to use a dash in a designated direction and strike opposing Pokemon with tough punches. Strike a close combat. If this move hits opposing Pokemon, its equivalent is reduced and the user recovers a portion of its HP based on the amount of damage dealt. If Bullet Punch is used again within a set amount of time, the number of punches and the amount of damage dealt increases. The number of punches increases from 3 to a maximum of 5. Also grants a shield if this move hits an opposing Pokemon. Okay, it does sound like Lord Lightning all around as well. Sounds like somewhere between a mix. It does have a lot of survivability as well, since we actually get a shield on the upgrade here as well. And we also get a, you know, recovering on HP. Sounds very good. And I think then we have the Unite move left. It's the last thing. Oof. Has the user dash before throwing consecu consecutive punches at a designated Pokemon on the opposing team, decreasing that Pokemon's move speed. As the last punch is thrown, five illusor illusory copies of the user are created that each dash is set distance from the user. If a copy hits an opposing Pokemon by dashing, it deals damage decreasing that decreases the Pokemon's move speed, then disappears. For a short time, this move can be used again. If this move is used again, the user dashes in the designated direction and deals damage to opposing Pokemon and hits before punching the ground, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the after effect. If the user hits a Pokemon on the opposing team by dashing, the user grabs that Pokemon and continues dashing. If the grab Pokemon hits an illusionary copy, it will be left incapacitated. I have to see this move in action, I feel like. This is a move I have to see in action, because I don't know what's going on. But it just sounds insane, right? It just sounds insane. Is there more to it? Oh, what? Wait, Scyther Unite move and Scissor Unite? Okay. Wait, Scyther gets the Unite move as well? How do we get, like... Do we just not always evolve, or...? Interesting. I'm not quite sure what exactly that means. But maybe get our Unite move before we evolve. Interesting. Alright. Um, yeah, let me guys know which Pokemon you're looking most forward to after reading all of this or after listening. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.